Hey guys, today we get to look at some massive spikes. When I mean massive spikes, I mean cards that went from pennies to $60. And this is what happened. Now, what is North Star? Uh, it is cost four. It is a rare from Legends. I'm pretty sure it is on the reserve list. You pay four, you tap it, you may cast one spell this turn by paying its casting cost with any type of mana. For example, two double green becomes four. However, the card still remains its original color. This ability is played as an interrupt, so pretty much an instant. Um, it's a beautiful card, I give it that. Why is it $60? Oh, MTD finance buyouts. I cannot think of anything that you'd want to really do. I mean, cost four to put in play and it costs four to tap it and you're still paying what it costs, just not in color manner. Anyway, Urza's Incubator, this card has snuck up. Uh, it is, it makes sense, right? It has a reprint. This would have been a perfect speculation had you made it. I didn't make it, so I'll be honest. It was super obvious in hindsight, but at the time, I didn't look into it. And with EDH, it's not like anyone made this speculation beforehand. It's like, oh wait, we all need Urza Incubators. Okay, cool, let's all go out and buy them. It's very simple, Commander 2017 is Tribal. This card is very, very, very good in Tribal. It's good in Cats, it's good in Vampires, it's good in Dragons. What deck is not going to want it? And if you go for it, why is the original spiking harder than let's say the Commander reprint? Well, the original one looks different. It is in the old school borders where you look at that nice brown. Next, we have nodes, and this card has gone up from 250. It used to be bulk, and then it wasn't bulk anymore. And then it became worth uh, $12, that's a lot. It's the white equivalent of a card that it, from Arabian Nights worth a lot of money, Drop of Honey. I don't know what Drop of Honey is, but I know Drop of Honey is worth a ton for what it does. It's good in EDH, um, so people who cannot afford the reserve list, I'm almost certain it is on the reserve list. Uh, Drop of Honey from Arabian Nights, I believe. If you cannot afford that very expensive 200, and that card has recently spiked as well. Uh, if you cannot afford that 200, I'm assuming it's 200, $300 card, you can go for the cheaper option in white. That's why playing on Chaos is so interesting, because you can do that. You can reprint a equivalent card. If Wizard of the Coast ever wanted to do that, it's an option, because I've seen it many times. Power Leech. You know how I made those videos, and every video ends with, oh man, if you have old cards, don't give them away, don't sell them, just hold on to your old cards. Power Leech is a blanking crappy card. It's not a good card. It's a very terrible card. It's been bulk forever and now it's $8. It's really, really bad. Uh, two green, gain one life whenever one of your opponent's artifacts becomes tapped or whenever the activation cost of one of your opponent's artifacts is triggered. It is not triggered by continuous artifacts. Yes, this is a life gaining mechanic. That's all it does. It gains you life. It's nice in EDH, I guess, if you're playing a life gain deck and you just want some extra life. But eh. next, uh, we have Haunting Wind, another prime example of a bulk card that has spiked to oblivion. This beautiful art. I mean, you don't see this artwork anymore. I think the artwork is just so much better than back in the old days. Now it's like, I think it's like too good now. Like I don't want to say it's too good. I don't. It's just different. Haunting Wind, free in a black each time an artifact is played, is tapped, or its activation is paid. It deals one damage to the artifact's controller. It's not triggered by continuous artifacts. For four, I would rather just destroy all artifacts or something like Shatterstorm or any number of artifact destruction. I don't want to bleed out my like opponent. If he's tapping so ring and he's taking one damage in EDH, he's not happy. And this is definitely not going to see playing Legacy or it's just too bad in Legacy. 
So I'm assuming it's ED8. Now, another card that I told you was very good to spec on is Captain Sisse. And it's just like a duh card, right? Wait a second. ED8 is about legends. What if there was more legends printed? It belongs in every deck that can play it. Like, it literally is a demonic tutor every single turn. Demonic Tutor, considered one of the best cards. I actually did a top 20 video. I don't know when that's being uploaded, but Demonic Tutor is the one of the top 20 most played cards in ED8. This is a Demonic Tutor after you pay four every turn for no cost because you can get grab legendary lands, you can grab legendary artifacts, you can grab whatever you want. Like, literally, it's ED8. Like, go ahead, grab something. Uh, I mean, the only bad thing you cannot grab is you cannot grab Soul Ring. Uh, it's probably the only thing I would want to grab that I cannot grab. Next, if Biff. Uh, I'm going to make another video about these uh, reserve list buyouts because uh, that's what's happening now. If Biff sucks, I mean, it just sucks. I don't really know what else to say. It's two double green for a free free flyer in green. I know that's kind of nice. Uh, whenever if Biff is in play, any player can pay one green to have if Biff do one damage to each player and each flying creature in play. The ability does not tap if Biff and cannot be used as soon as it is successfully summoned. So essentially anyone with triple green can hurricane if Biff and kill it. Is this a particularly appealing card? Mm, no. But it's $150 because it's on a reserve list. Ick. All right. Thought seeds. I'm not talking about the regular one, although the regular one is making strides. I'm talking about the foil $527 thought seeds with the spike recently. This is a classic case where the premium version of it is not the masterpiece and it's not the regular version and it's definitely not the reprinted version, which is very ugly in my opinion, in Pharos. It is the original version. Uh, it's considered by far the better artwork and it is very, very beautiful. And you're looking at 2000, 2K for a playset. I one time had a playset of these, but it was a long time ago. And I traded it into probably some dual lands or something. I don't know what I traded it into, but I was very happy after the deal was over. Otherwise, I would have kept them because the artwork is very beautiful. The colors are great. The blue, the purple, the pink. The ears are a little gross, but I don't tend to look at that part of the artwork. Uh, and lastly, Seedborn Muse. Uh, after the Prophet of Kufix, if you want a crazy speculation, this is not something I advise you to do, but this would be a home run. Spec on Prophet of Crufix being on band. Prophet of Crufix is like 75 cents, 50 cents. It's better than this. By a lot. Not just by a little. By a lot. And Seaborn Muse is already a $24 card and it has been reprinted. This is actually a reprint from Legions, I believe. And the reason that you saw it go from 10 to 24 is because Prophet Crufix was banned and people just needed needed it. This is one of the cards that I think they should reprint in the supplemental product. It's a little hard to do now, but when it was $10, it definitely should have been reprinted to prevent it being from 24. I don't know. If you want to take a risky gamble, Prophet Crufix, that's a gamble for you guys. I don't know. If it will ever be unbanned, but trust me, if it is unbanned, it's skyrocketing to five to seven. It's going to do 500 plus multiplier, no problem. The same day it becomes, quote, unbanned. So if I had control of the EDH list, I would be like, all right, let me accumulate profit crew fix for the next two years, and then I'm going to say it's unbanned, and then make a ton of money, right? Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> anyway, bye guys.